This episode brought to you by Stardust, fans sharing video reactions to movies, TV, and trailers. the nostalgia critic i remembered so you don't have to well it's christmas eve and that means meeting up with your friends and loved ones and trying to stop them from killing each other especially when your friends and loved ones are as polar opposite as they can get uncle lies aunt despair can i have some water tonight well i suppose you've been good enough this year honey why don't you share some of yours here you go oh no that's no way to treat a child yeah you raise yours like we raise ours. Well, I'm pretty sure they did raise me before I got abandoned in the Balto review. No, that wasn't you. Pretty sure it was. No, we remember the children we abandoned. Do you? Well, I don't know about you, but I sure am excited for our Christmas meal. Yeah, where is it? We've been waiting forever. Now, son, don't make us abandon you like we did her. But you just said... The meal's taking a while because it's being specially delivered. Trust me, you only want an expert to deal with something so perfectly Christmassy. Well, as long as it's edible, I'm good. Honey! Okay, it doesn't have to be edible! <laughs> <laughs> that explains why your kid looks like she ate chimney. It tasted like dying. Well, at least we know where our kid is. What are you even talking about? Oh, now I get it. Hey, boy, stop eating that glue and save some for me! I feel colors. Parents of the year. He won't even share. You say something over there, pubic wig? Hey! Why don't we watch a movie? The perfect Christmas interaction where we don't have to have any interaction. Home Alone 2? You couldn't even put on Home Alone 1? Ooh, I love this movie. You do? Me too! I thought most people only liked the first one. Exactly. They've seen it so many times it's practically background noise. But everyone has interesting thoughts about Home Alone 2. You see, when the original came out in 1990, it was huge. It played at number one for 12 weeks and turned a relatively unknown child actor, Macaulay Culkin, into a megastar. So, not surprisingly, two years later, a sequel came about, giving everybody the same comedy they grew to love. And I do mean the same comedy. Many people were angered at how much repeating there was, reusing the same jokes, scenarios, even teaching the same lessons that was learned in the original. Macaulay Culkin and director Chris Columbus even mock it in the first film's commentary. John Hughes said he could write this on the weekend. I wonder how long it took him to write the second one. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a little bit of cut and paste, and boom, you're done. Sequel. Bam. <laughs> but much like Ghostbusters 2, people totally forgot they hated it. Because... Come on! Well, I'm here to see if there's any validity to that come on, and look at a movie that seems to divide many, but at least can serve as a harmless distraction. I'm only watching this for Sharknado star John Hurd. Give it a chance! This is the greatest movie I've ever seen in my life, and I don't say that often. It's true! Let's take a gander at Home Alone 2. We start off this roller coaster of variety with practically the same music against the same credits with the same exterior shot followed by the same interior shot. Okay, I know you're trying to establish a style, but when you don't even need to move the tripods from your last shoe, you might want to mix it up a bit. Hopefully everyone's character traits are repeated too! Hey, easy on the fluids, pal. Now you can be a skag with a slightly darker shade of skin. You better not wreck my trip, you little sourpuss. Your dad's paying good money for it. And you know what? If I had my own money, I'd go on my own vacation. Alone. Yeah, okay, let's address what's arguably one of the biggest problems with the film. Macaulay Culkin's performance sucks. But it's not really his fault. He already played up the kid who has to act like an adult in the first film, and he immediately became the biggest star in the world. And that's not exaggerating, he was everywhere for a while. That kind of attention so quickly, so young, is gonna result in this kind of performance. The I don't care, I'm cool as shit now performance. He didn't mean what he said, he was just sucking up to you. At first, you look kinda scary, but when I think about it, it's not so bad. Without any of you guys, and I'd had the most fun of my whole life. It would happen to you, it would happen to me, it would happen to anyone. There's really no blame, it's just the situation. With that said, let's make fun of this like hell! Honey, are you packed yet? Yes. Yes. 
I'm trying to see if I can literally phone in my performance. Did you see what Grandma Penelope sent you for the trip? An inflatable clown to play with in the pool. How exciting. Can't tell. Are you excited? It's eerily similar to all the times you actually are excited. Merry Christmas, Kevin. This is the greatest accident of my life. How exciting. Why do we have to go to Florida? There's no Christmas trees in Florida. Kevin, what is it with you and Christmas trees? Stay at the world-renowned Plaza Hotel. Yeah, most of this opening dialogue you can just replace with. Why can't set up for second or third act payoff? Bad joke to make it look like we're not setting up for the second or third act payoff. Honey, did you set up for second or third act payoff? Segway to other set up for second or third act payoff to make you forget about this set up for second or third act payoff. Speaking of which... Kevin has to grab his tie while his uncle sings in the shower and decides to record it. I do hope the dollar store microphone on that thing picks up the clearest audio both inside and outside the room. Get out of here, you nosy little pervert, or I'm gonna slap you silly! Ironically, Macaulay Culkin might be the only person from Hollywood not told that yet. He performs at a Christmas pageant with his brother Buzz, who proceeds to make fun of him. <laughs> Those easily amused pageant goers. Look! The letter B! <laughs> you are so ready to watch Home Alone 3. Kevin finds out what Buzz is doing and punches him. But because this is a Family Matters episode now, it has to go more over the top. <laughs> Did I do that? Funny enough, this reveals that the only character in this sequel that strangely evolved is Buzz. I know that sounds strange seeing how bullies are always the most underdeveloped characters, but he legitimately grows as a character! He's still a bully, but now he knows how to manipulate, his vocabulary shot up, and he seems wittier and funnier. My prank was immature and ill-timed. Merry Christmas indeed. What a troubled young man. The only downgrade is, when he is mean, his wordage is a lot more... um... Disney Channel. Beat that, you little trout sniffer. Ooh, trout sniffer. That's much more intimidating than... If you're growing on my ass. But hey, if you're not a fan of how the language in this one's more cleaned up than the last one, don't worry. There's plenty of more shit repeated from the first film. If I had my own money, I'd go on my own vacation. Alone. Well, you got your wish last year, maybe you'll get it again this year. It all depends on how lazy and rushed the writer is to get his paycheck. Up, oh, you're in luck. We did it again! <laughs> You hear that wall we're randomly screaming at? Ugh! Speed up the film, play William's not cracker music again, rinse, repeat, water down. This time Kevin makes it at least as far as the airport with his family, but they get separated and Kevin gets on the wrong plane. We have to close up here, they're ready to go. He dropped his boarding pass. This plane can't leave. Board him, but make sure he locates his family before you leave him. Well, 9-11 hasn't happened yet, so go ahead. I have some theories on why 9-11 really happened. Really? Do ten. Oh, look, another possibly debatable funny scene! Yeah, watch this over and see if you snicker at something a little odd. Have you ever been to Florida? Vous êtes petit, ça. Moi, je viens de la Florida, toi, un peu. C'est un bon restaurant. Seulement, peut-être tes parents, ils connaissent... Now, don't get me wrong, this doesn't seem that funny. Whatever, he looks at the camera because a guy in a different language won't shut up. But realistically, it's the most nonsensical, awkward moment. We know he's supposed to be looking at the audience, but in this situation, there is no audience. So imagine you're talking to me and I suddenly just went... That'd be super weird! And why is this guy still talking? He knows Kevin doesn't speak French. Does he think he made a friend? A friend who slowly shades you by looking at the airplane set with more space than any plane ever built? It's actually kind of hilarious, just not at all for the intended reasons. Ah, oh, I just have that feeling. We have everybody. There's nothing to worry about. Yeah, you're right. You're right. We're fine. American Airlines. Losing your luggage and your kids. So Kevin, of course, ends up in New York and checks to see where he is. What city is that over there? That's New York, sir. Yikes, again. Anyone else feel like Culkin's blank stares are trying to eat your soul? You taste like innocence. Let's do this shtick again. My family's in Florida and I'm in New York. My family's in Florida? Oh, come 
come on, in the original, he had to really think about it. Dealing with the fact that his family was gone, but then think about all the mean things they said to him. Here it just looks like he suddenly thought of his residual check. My family's in Florida and I'm in New York. My family's in Florida? Speaking of money, he uses all the cash in his dad's bag he accidentally took to see New York. He even checks out sites that are... Um, uncomfortable, to say the least. You see, it was all a conspiracy by the Satanists, which is why you can see the face in the smoke. Hey, look, the gun feathers! Yep, Kevin passes by a truck the escaped convict snuck into, and their sequel material is much to be a scared of. Smell that? Yeah. You know what that is? Fish. It's freedom. No, it's fish. Sorry, Matthew Broderick will master this routine six years later. There's no need in trying to top him. We get ourselves a couple of phony passports, and we hightail it to some foreign country. Arizona? Oh, I do hope there's more Secretary from Ghostbusters reboot material with him. Big enough coincidence, they all happen to be in New York at the exact same time, but Kevin just misses them passing in the street, causing Marv to bump into someone. Serves you right. Come on, let's go. Why did that anger him so much? This is a guy who breaks into God knows how many houses and almost commits child murder, yet speaking French to a woman was too far? Imagine how he'd react to this guy. What the fucking world is coming to? How do you like that? Kevin makes his way to the famous Plaza Hotel, but not before coming across a disturbing character? Sick. Why? I mean, okay, this is obviously a retread of the old man gimmick from the first one, but he had a creepy backstory and could at times look very scary. This is a Susan Boyle and Mrs. Doubtfire hybrid. She doesn't look the least bit frightening. Is it because she has birds? Is that it? Birds aren't scary. You're literally feeding them in a later scene. If it were bats, it'd be scary. If it was insects, it'd be scary. If it was rats, anything but birds, there is literally a Mary Poppins song about this scenario. It is famously charming and not the least bit intimidating. Who knows? Maybe it was meant to be a horror film. He finally makes it to the hotel where he comes across a <clears throat> interesting cameo. Excuse me, where's the lobby? Down the hall and to the left. Thanks. There goes a man who looks like he'd lose by three million votes. Excuse me, where's the lobby? Grab him by the pussy. Donald! Auntie, isn't that a man we should be talking about? Nope, 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 there's no reason to talk about him at all. You feel like that guy got into politics. Surely there is no harm in discussing politics over the holidays! I completely agree. I'll start. Tim Curry, save the day! <laughs> For every one star movie he's in, he's the reason he got that one star. Tim Curry. We can all agree on him. I'm not kidding. He is once again the best part of the movie. Even teaming in with Rob Schneider can't distract how awesome he is. He plays the concierge who suspects Kevin of suckering them with a stolen card and phony story. Mostly because their operators are idiots. I'd like a hotel room, please, with an extra large bed, a TV, and one of those little refrigerators you have to open with a key. To be fair, that slow down voice would work a lot better if he just added two words. Howdy do. This is Peter McAllister. I'm drunk. See? Suddenly it seems plausible. Reservation for McAllister? A reservation for yourself. A kid going to a hotel, making a reservation? I don't think so. It's that thing he said in the last movie! Did you get that? Did you get that? Give me his credit card so I won't get into mischief. And ma'am, sometimes I do get into mischief. <laughs> we all do. It of course works, and Kevin enjoys all the perks of luxury. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle By the way, show of hands, how many people when they hear this song instantly think of Kevin in Swim Trunk? <laughs> yeah, me too. Stupid movie. Get the film credit that even Rob Schneider gets a few decent laughs. Mostly involving a misunderstanding about tipping. I'm sorry, you wanted a tip. I still have some tip left over. <laughs> no tip? Okay. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. That could make like five of my movies! Yep, we're even doing this bit again. It's me, Johnny. I could smell you getting off the elevator. 
All anybody seems to watch in these movies are these films, The Grinch, and Foreign It's a Wonderful Life. I say branch out, movie, but why start now? I was singing at the Blue Monkey last night. You was here. And you were smooching with my brother. Actually, a part of me wishes I could just watch this film series as opposed to these Home Alones. Somebody crowdfund to get these movies made. We gotta see them in their entirety. I believe you. But my Tommy Gun don't. You're the only duck in my pond. Get down on your knees and tell me you love me. Whoa, family friendly, my ass! He mows down Harley Quinn in a bullet filled bloodbath. But don't worry, parents, he didn't swear while doing it. Oh, yeah, this feels earned. I hope we have fun learning the exact same goddamn lesson we learned in the exact same goddamn way in the first one. You know, there's a difference between tear jerking and tear jerks. Tear jerking is what the first film did. Tear jerks are what the producers of this film are thinking they could do the exact same thing again. Meanwhile, Curry, in a totally not creepy at all way, stalks a little kid's room. Housekeeping. As Dr. Strangelove. Come on, Curry, we know you can do better accents than that. No, no, the diamonds are here! Kevin sets up in seconds what would take a su- And that's when every adult in the audience said, Okay, we're not coming back. This is the course we're doing. It's shutting up my kids for a while, so just count your blessings. Oh, better get the irony that I'm frightened by a clown! <laughs> the next morning, Curry tries to apologize for his actions. Is my transportation here? Out in front, sir. A limousine and a pizza. Okay, can we just do a count of every average word made amazing by Tim Curry's weird pronunciations? Pizza. 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 <laughs> oh, Tim, I love you and your Tim... Curry-sma. I do hope your father understands that I was simply checking the room. If some guy looked at you in the shower, would you ever want to see him again? You clearly haven't watched my other movies. Bye. Have a lovely day. <laughs> I will also give credit that this film has the greatest looking cheese pizza in movie history. Mr. McAllister, here's your very own cheese pizza. Wow. I don't even know where I got this. I just wanted a cheese pizza so bad, I somehow made it happen. Can you share? <sighs> okay, you three will get the pizza, they'll get the box. Ha! Suckers! <laughs> hey guys, here's the best reactions to what I just reviewed this week. Home Alone is one of my childhood movies. It was one of my favorite Christmas movies growing up. What? He wants us to react to Home Alone too? <laughs> Fuck that. It's a holly jolly rehash, and it really kind of sucks. I still kind of like the sequel. Take a shot of vodka every time Harry and Marv are supposed to die in the climax of this movie. I bet ten bucks will be passed out in roughly five minutes flat. I am my cat. Say hi, kitty. Hi, kitty. Say hi to the camera, kitty. <laughs> it looks so adorable. Yeah, yeah, the movie's still shit, though. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. And a happy new year. You have opinions, a lot of opinions, about movies, TV shows, even trailers. There's so much to talk about. You get emotional about them just like anybody gets emotional about them. Well, now you don't have to wait to get that raw emotion straight to the internet. Why? Because we got Stardust app. It allows you instantly to film your reactions to movies, TV shows, and even trailers. Happy? Angry? Confused? Whatever it is and whatever your reaction is, Stardust is there to show it. Some of the wildest and craziest reactions are on there, and they're so much fun to watch. There's a lot of variety, endless possibilities, and they're definitely worth checking out. I even use it myself. This week I reacted to Alita Battle Angel, Star Wars The Last Jedi, and of course, Home Alone 2. It's there to get the first and best reaction that you got. It's a ton of fun and 100% free. So check out other people's opinions as well as sharing your own. Also, stay tuned afterwards to see how you can be in the next Nostalgia Critic. Kevin's credit card to find out it's stolen, but it's done in one of my favorite dissolves of all time. Christmas,
Admit it, that was a much more satisfying live-action Grinch than anything Ron Howard gave us. In your heart. Meanwhile, Marv and Harry plan their next heist. While ice skating. Cause they had the location. Get over here and interrupt my foreshadowing! We need cash. We need it now. Hotels! Tourists carry lots of cash. Oh, <gasps> Kevin! There's no guarantees. I got a better idea. Well, that pointless line went nowhere. They decide to rob a toy store, Duncan's toy chest, which again, Kevin happens to be at. Yeah, enjoy the economies that could keep a place like that open. You got a few years left. He ends up talking to the owner of the store, the Schmuckers brand jelly guy. He's unaware at the moment, though, that he is actually the owner. My, 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 where did you get all that money? In that store? I imagine everybody has that kind of money! He tells Kevin that a lot of the profits will go to a children's hospital on Christmas Eve, so Kevin makes a donation. I'm not supposed to spend this money, but I have $20 from shoveling snow in a jar in our garage, so you can give this to Mr. Duncan. The hospital needs it more than I do. Aw, oh, well that's quite a sacrifice. After riding your limo from your luxury hotel on your folks' bank account? $20, I'm sure, is a big deal! Why don't you give more? But Mr. Duncan falls for it and gives him a present of two turtle doves. One Kevin keeps, and one he gives to a friend. Speaking of shticks, guess whose paths cross again? Hiya, pal! <gasps> okay, it's already a huge coincidence that not only are they in New York, but they're in roughly the same area, but how many times have they accidentally bumped into each other? Three times in New York City! Hell, even when you plan to meet up, it's impossible half the time! These three have better homing powers than the Keymaster and the Gatekeeper! Ooh, you didn't put the hands on the cheeks. Restrained. He runs away from them and uses that valuable time not locating a cop, but instead putting beads on a sidewalk. Because he's supposed to be a smart kid, remember? Yes! Not! I don't know. 90s. We only said those two things. We were pretty dumb. Tim Curry puts on his best Cheshire cap preparing to eat Alice's face as he confronts Kevin's lies. What's the matter? Matter. Matter. What? Store wouldn't take your stolen credit card. Let's see what the police have to say about this. Yes! Police! There are two criminals chasing me! I could use the protection! Oh, I ran away. I don't want to get grounded! Little idiot. Well, we just had one unfunny pratfall. Let's shake things up with another unfunny pratfall. <laughs> Show of emotion. This looks like a job for 1940s audio off of the clearest speakers on a 10-inch TV. Hold it right there. You was here last night, too, wasn't you? Yes, sir. And you were smooching with my brother. <laughs> I'm I love this one look he gives like, did I? <laughs> no, no, that was another hotel. You've been smooching with everybody. Snuffy, Al, Leo. Little mole with the gimpy leg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this scene is ungodly childish and weirdly forced, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't kind of laugh at it. Everything from one of them having one of the names he mentions to Schneider's hilarious shame faces to still to this day wondering what Bony Bob looks like. Cheeks, Bony Bob. Tell me you're not wondering that. And of course, who can forget? Get down on your knees and tell me you love me. I love you. How was that not on a Home Alone Valentine's Day card? You also gotta wonder what he whispered to himself before saying that line. How is this not the most embarrassing thing I've ever done? Stay in your rooms! There's an insane guest with a gun! Plaza. We thought this was good advertising, how? But Kevin comes across Marv and Harry waiting for him outside, revealing their evil plan, of course. At midnight tonight, we're hitting Duncan's toy chest. Ma! Off the Rio, Ma! Huh? You wanna shut up? What's the difference? He's not gonna talk to anybody. 
It's only been two minutes and already I missed Tim Curry so much. He would have said anybody like anybody. But again, because New York is so tiny, they run across the same woman from before and Kevin makes it look like they pinched her ass. Oh! He did it! Did what? Oh. Oh. This is why you're Time Magazine's Person of the Year. Kevin escapes and gives yet another great read from his emotionally gripping voice. I want to go home. Mom, where are you? Can we show back to back the cries for his mother from both films? Mom! Mom, where are you? You know what? Your next call back to the last film better be funny as hell or I'm walking! Estupidas tontas descubrirás que fieran los hijos a casa casi sin ropa. You get lucky. The family's told that Kevin is in New York, but sadly he's left wandering the streets in one of the scarier parts of the city. Watch it, kid! <laughs> now there's a guy who has things figured out. Looking for somebody to read you a bedtime story? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, 50 bucks, I can do that. And he comes across the... Scariest one of all. Hi. I would say hi, most kids would. Your birds are really cute. He of course befriends her and she takes him to the top of a concert hall where... Insert church scene from first one here. I wasn't always like this, you know. I had a job. I had a home. But the man I loved fell out of love with me. That broke my heart. And... And whenever the chance to be loved came along again, I ran away from it. Wait, that's it? You went through a breakup and you ended up here? You see, sometimes you can trust a person, and then when things are down, they forget about you. Maybe they're just too busy. Wait, 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 wait. I want to make sure I understand this. <clears throat> In love and employed, breakup, homelessness. There's a missing gap there, I feel. Would you mind filling that in? Look, I admire you're trying to make homeless people more human, but Kevin found the person with the least homeless-ish backstory. There's mental illness, abuse, financial ruin, tough things to confront. And this silver-haired hopeless romantic is the one representing all that? She's gonna be your icon for what most homeless people are like? What if Kevin went with the Watch It Kid guy? Would his problems be so quick and easy to understand? Watch I understand it, you must kid. have gone through some heartbreak. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure Watch that you must have gone through kid. some emotional turmoil. <laughs> Maybe you fell in love Watch with someone it, and she kid. broke your heart. <laughs> Maybe just something went wrong Watch with it. You know what? Kid. I'm not feeling this. <laughs> so not only is this emotionally empty, but it also feels manipulative. Which again, I guess is in fitting with the theme of the movie. Beat that, you little trout sniffer. Oh, now we have some definite opinions on homeless people. Oh, do you? Oh, yes. All their problems can be solved super easily. Super easy, huh? I know. Let's talk about it in great detail. We Christmas song, Christmas song. I forgot the words because I'm nervous. I'm singing this to distract you. So is it working? I suppose so. Go on. I'm going back to watching Home Alone 2 because it's something I want to do now. So that, that's what I'm doing. That was beautiful. He has a real gift. <laughs> if you need somebody to trust, it can be me. I won't forget to remember you. Don't make promises you can't keep. Weirdly cryptic. Kevin walks by the children's hospital and decides he wants to stop the robbery on his own. You can mess with a lot of things. But you can't mess with kids on Christmas. Yeah! Kevin goes to his relative's abandoned house being renovated, puts together another pointless map, seriously, minimum half hour to draw that in this time-sensitive scenario. And John Williams plays the exact same score from last time because he's doing Schindler's List, yo, he's got real movies to work on. <sighs> this is so lame, I need my curry fix. What kind of idiots do you have working here? The finest in New York. You're the drink of Gatorade in a marathon. I'm going out to look for him. What? Your son is lost in one of the biggest cities in the world. And there are hundreds of parasites out there. There are bird ladies out there, madam. Bird ladies! Armed to the teeth. Do bundle up. It's awfully cold outside. A moment of silence for the last scene of Tim Curry in this film. Guten Abend, guten Nacht. 
after Duncan's toy chest closes down, politely leaving the lights on and all the money in the register, our thieves look over their riches. Merry Christmas, Harry. Happy Hanukkah, Marv. Oh, I won't have to do Christmas Story 2 after this. We're up to our elbows in cash, and there's nobody that even knows about it. Oh no, the punchline to what I just said! Thankfully, Kevin knew Harry would land on the left side of the window and Marv on the right as he launches the other into the air. Okay, somewhere we went from Three Stooges destruction to Avengers destruction. That's the crash Batman makes after falling from a building in heavy armor. This is a short Italian from a tumbling act. The damage he would have made could be buffered out. They chase him to the building where they think they have him cornered. We got busted last time because we underestimated that little bundle of misery. This ain't like the last time. Clearly you have not been watching this movie. Sonny! Yes? You throw down your camera and we won't hurt you. You'll never hear from us again. Yeah, they need those pictures so people won't be looking for them. Which people already are, hi? And in keeping with the earlier TV scene, we get yet another incredibly lazy, yet somehow weirdly funny moment. Okay, kid. Give it to me. Here we go. Let's do it. The first big home trap in Home Alone 2. Oh. <laughs> A brick! That's our first big trap! A blatant, blunt, brutal brick! No turning wheels or strings or anything complicated, it's just a brick. But to make things even stranger, he does it again. Boy! And again. Boy! And again. Ah! It's almost like a troll joke. Home Alone 2, the genius trap setups. It's like the best thing these films are known for. And we just watch a guy get hit with a brick for like two or three minutes. I'm sorry, I know it's dumb, but it's ingeniously dumb. After that, it goes the course you'd pretty much suspect. They both try different ways to get in and are met with a bunch of traps. Some are okay, some are lame, they're hit and miss to say the least. But even God gets sick of Kevin's shit and gives him a bit of his own medicine. You may have won the battle, little dude, but you lost the war. The Home Alone sequels in a nutshell. So what, they're gonna make him go through the goofy traps like they said they would in the last one? Jesus Christ, he has a gun! Shit just got real! I never made it to the sixth grade, kid. It doesn't look like you're gonna eat it. Okay, if this was a Scorsese film, he'd be on his fifth bullet. Kevin, run! Catch me lucky charms, asshole! Sure enough, birds arrive to fly slightly to the right of them. And the police finally show up because you don't mess with kids on Christmas, but you don't call the cops until maybe 20 minutes Disney slapstick. Kevin clearly did the right thing. Prisoners have already exchanged gifts. We missed the presents? He made us hide out in the store so we could steal all the kitties' charity money. What an out-of-nowhere confession even for a dumb person to make. Kevin's mom continues to search the city when she finally gets the idea of where he would be. Where no one else would be on Christmas Eve. Here's a fun game. Try to count how many times you actually believe what he's saying. I want to take back every mean thing I ever said to my family. Even if they don't take back the things they said. I don't care. I'll love all of them. It's impossible I can see all okay. of them. Can I just see my mother? I don't ever want another thing as long as I Too live. much emotion. Too much emotion. I just want my mother. Sometime. Anytime. Even if it's just once and only for a couple of minutes. Whew! What a roller coaster. I sure hope he finds that blue fairy. What's that? He's not the emotionless robot from AI? Ooh, that sucked. The mother finds him, though, and takes him back to the hotel. The reunion is so underwhelming, they literally sleep through it. Yeah, next shot. They're all asleep. Remember how good everybody felt when they all reunited in the first one? Oh, I miss you, I guess. Holy smokes, it's morning. It's Christmas morning, man. I don't think Santa Claus visits hotels. He knows we're Jewish. It looks like Mr. Duncan was grateful to Kevin, though, for saving his money, so he got them all gifts. Making this already rich as hell family even richer. Again, the stories of 90s economy. But Kevin realizes there's one gift he forgot to give. As long as we each have a turtle dove, we'll be friends forever. Oh, great, like I don't have enough friggin' birds! Thank you. I won't forget you. Trust me. 
Don't make promises you can't keep. Aw, oh, jeez, lady! And because we haven't first movied enough. Kevin, you spent $967 on rogue service! <gasps> oh, would you like to join us at our hotel? Oh, never mind. Merry Christmas! Enjoy the freezing cold! I'm sorry, I still have some thoughts on that whole homeless thing. As do I. Well, maybe we have some things to say about that, too. Yeah! That'll be the food! Stay here in total uncomfortable silence until I get back. We get to that. It's like our Fridays. We do that at home. Santa Claus! Santa Claus! <laughs> Here's your Christmas tree. <sighs> Thank you. Well. Aren't you going to invite me in for dinner? You don't want to be a part of this. I believe you. Flee this gingerbread house of angst. Ho ho. And that's what I think we should do with homeless people. Every single one of them. Oh god, I'm too late. Well, we disagree quite hard on that. Okay, who's ready for some amazing food? Yeah! Those homeless folk need to get a job! What? I mean, if we just keep giving everything to them, they're never gonna get back on their feet! We need stricter laws! Really? Well, I completely disagree. These people have gotten the worst life has to offer. Yeah, and we should give them as much support and care as possible. Really? Well, I guess we'll just have to agree to disagree. Agreed. Why be adults if we can't accept our differences? Aunt Despair, is this the thing you're always trying to teach me called acceptance? Yes, it is, sweetheart. And those people across the table seem to be pretty good at it. Thank you. Really? I'm hungry. Me too. What you got to eat there, critic? Oh, well, since this wasn't quite the nuclear explosion I thought it would be, I guess we can go ahead and eat. This is my favorite meal to have this time of year. Oh, we're all so excited. Yeah, Christmas crunch. Huh? You brought cereal as the main course? Dude, it's not just cereal, it's Christmas crunch. It's the greatest Christmas cereal ever made. I've never been a fan of it myself. What? Yeah, I'll eat anything, but I stay far away from Christmas Crunch. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're, you're joking. I always found it to be a generic offshoot. Yeah, you just slap Christmas on it, and suddenly it's something completely different. <laughs> 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 Let's all remain calm here. Too much sugar for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, just one bowl of that stuff will give you diabetes. Am I right, kiddo? Yeah. She knows. Nothing to get upset about here. <laughs> I think I'd rather eat the box it came in, right, Critic? <laughs> How dare you! How dare you blasphemy Christmas Crunch! Have you no heart? Have you no soul? Well, I'll tell you all the only place you can find that beauty if not in Christmas Crunch, you can find it up your ass! Monsters! Monsters! All of you! You do not deserve to eat Christmas Crunch's prostate! A pox on you! Look at me! I understand Christmas because I don't eat Christmas Crunch! You Satans! You Christmas Satan! You are Judas as shit! That's what you betrayers are! Judas is shit! I hope you rot for all eternity, especially the children! Shame! Well, Merry Christmas. So it is. Merry Christmas! I guess I've been talking for an entire 24 hours. 26. But who's counting? Oh my god, I am so sorry. I totally exploded and ruined everybody's evening. I, I'll go get your coats. No, 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 hold on. There's no need for that. You had an outburst. It happens. You apologized and saw the error of your ways. We're okay. Really? Yeah, we know that deep down you're a good kid, just nuts. Clearly. No doubt. Bungers. Well, well, thank you. That, that really means a lot to me. You guys would forgive me after all that. You know, you guys really are a lot like Home Alone 2. How? I don't believe this. How are we in any way like Home Alone 2? Not everything ties into a movie you're reviewing. Well, this one does! <sighs> it is annoying, predictable, and not always giving its all, but it surprises you sometimes. There's still moments that make you glad you saw it, and though they're not there all the time, those moments do go a long way. It pisses me off to no end in many respects, yet I also find myself coming back to it every year. Like a strange comfort food that doesn't taste good, but it's still cozy and familiar. Oh, you mean like Christmas Crunch? I do not, that is delicious. Okay. The film has too many flaws to count, but that's also part of what makes it kind of fun. Just how phoned in parts of it are mixed in with new elements that are legitimately good. I know it's a weird way to explain it, but the feelings many people have for it are weird too, including my own. It's not always good, but it's harmless and familiar. 
mixed with just enough enjoyable moments to make it worth it in the end. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and people really are kinda like movies. Some you can be around, some you can't, but they're always worth a shot. Happy holidays, and enjoy your Christmas features. <laughs> On second thought, we have been up for 24 hours. What do you say we take a nap? Sounds good. Shut that door! Hey guys, here's even more reactions to what I just reviewed this week. When it comes to sequels, most of the time they don't do as well as the original film. For Home Alone 2, I like it as much as the first movie. <laughs> Home Alone 2 is the best Home Alone and a great holiday film. It's still just as funny. I love Kevin's antics and it's a fun watch. I can't hate this film. I really can't. I can't find a reason to hate this film. Home Alone 2! You just made the list! <laughs> Merry Christmas, you filthy animal! You want your reaction to be in the next Nostalgia Critic? Next week we'll be reviewing Star Wars The Last Jedi. Just download the Stardust app at the link below, follow us at Nostalgia Critic, record your reaction, and then tweet it to us with this hashtag. Or use Facebook. The ones we like best will make it in the next Nostalgia Critic video. We absolutely love going through and seeing everybody's different reactions. The over-the-top ones, the funny ones, there's such a wide variety out there and we love watching them. And you will too. So download the app, get out there, and show us your crazy reactions. Have a lovely day. Hey folks, so this Wednesday, December 20th, we are going to be doing a charity drive. We haven't done one of these in a while, and we're really excited to do it. We are doing it for St. Jude's Hospital. Uh, it is starting at 6 p.m. Central Time. Uh, we're going to keep it low-key. We kind of want to talk with you guys. Uh, that's what a lot of it's going to be about. We're going to be showing videos and joking around and stuff like that, but a lot of it's going to be kind of interacting with you, and we're going to allow you guys to call in and stuff like that. So uh, keep posted on how uh, how that'll have happen. There'll, of course, be, you know, an incentive to give. It is a charity drive, but yes, that is definitely uh, something we really want to do, because uh, we like talking with our fans. Uh, we're going to try and have a lot of Channel Awesome uh, uh, crew there that, uh, you know, does, like, nostalgia critics and stuff, but we're also going to have Brad Jones is going to be in, and Chris Stuckman is going to be in, uh, for no particular reason. I don't... Maybe we're filming something, I don't know. But uh, yes, definitely uh, check that out. I don't know how long we're gonna go. Um, you know, we're just gonna go until, you know, until we can't really go that much more, uh, you know. But I mean, this thing usually lasts like, you know, maybe six hours or something like that. So, so it'll go for a bit. And uh, it's gonna be streaming on our YouTube channel and it's gonna be streaming live. Uh, so if you wanna see it, go there. We're gonna be going through uh, GoFundMe to uh, you know, to handle the money and everything. And we are going to have prizes as well. Uh, the big giveaways are going to be uh, a Nintendo Switch with games as well. And a Nintendo 3DS uh, XL Super NES Edition with games as well. Uh, so, yeah, definitely um, it, definitely go ahead and, and uh, uh, check us out. See if you can give a call and so forth. And uh, definitely give. This is a great organization. And like I said, we, we do charity shout-outs at the end of our videos, but we haven't done a, a charity drive in a while. We haven't done a stream in a really long time. So we really want to, you know, do one of these again, especially when we have people in town. So definitely tune in. It's going to be...
be a lot of fun. It's gonna be very chilled and laid back. You know, it's it's one of those things where we find out a lot of times just having a cool conversation with cool people is enough. Uh, and, you know, even people just playing games sometimes is enough, you know. So we just want to have a lot of time, just, a lot of fun just chilling with you guys and talking with you. And like I said, definitely uh, give to St. Jude's. They do amazing work and they help so many people. So definitely check that out. I'm going to look over my list, see if there's anything else uh, that I missed here. No doesn't look like it so yeah that's about it guys thank you so much for watching and hopefully we'll see you there take care